today I'm going to talk about spherical coordinates and how to convert from spherical coordinates to other types of coordinate systems. So I'll start off with a little sketch. I think this will help make it a lot easier to understand. So here's label my axes. Okay. And I'm interested in describing this point. I'm going to call it A. And I'm going to approach this point. I'm going to say that this is rho. And I'm going to say that this angle is phi between uh, the x or the z axis, the positive z axis, and rho. And I'm going to say that, well, theta, I'm going to say that theta is the angle that you wrap around z. And it's going to be the same one that we use. It's, theta is the same as the one that we used in polar coordinates. It's the, it's the, it's the angle away from the positive x-axis. So now that we have that pretty clear, um, I can describe what uh, these kind of mean. Okay, so the summary is or um, the acceptable values. Th this coordinate system is going to be able to describe all the points determined by a given sphere. So this row, if you could imagine, if it goes all the way around like this and for each row, I said that you can use this theta to wrap around, um, but I'm going to say that theta can range from 0 to 2 pi. You get all these kind of um, constructions like so, and this is going to determine the outer, all the outer points on a, on a sphere. But you don't really need to see that picture now. Um, I'll go into talking about something else. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that rho has to be greater than zero. I'm gonna say that theta is gonna be between zero and two pi, and I'm gonna put the restriction for phi as zero to pi. Oh, sorry, that's a little sloppy. So the this is enough um, to describe any point in space, it turns out that this is enough. You can describe anything. Okay, now I'm going to talk about, well, how do we describe this point in A uh, with A that has uh, spherical coordinates, rho, phi, and theta? How do we, how do we describe that same point with um, cylindrical coordinates? So what I'm asking is this. How do we move from this form to r, theta, and z? How do we move from spherical to cylindrical? Well, we need r, theta, and z. Well, actually, theta, theta is shared between both of these. So actually, we just need to find out what r and z are. Well, how do we find out r and z? Well, if we just look at this picture, I just drew this triangle. Um, imagine that this comes up here and that this constructs the right angle you'll realize that this is the same picture I'm just I'm taking this R and I'm putting it up here and I'm calling this length Z so really we can determine all the information that we want by looking at this little picture right here well X is gonna be well actually what is R gonna be R is going to be the the sine. It's going to be rho times the sine of phi. I just figured that out by taking um, the sine of theta. Well, the sine of theta is r over phi, and then I multiplied both sides to get rid of that. And we could isolate r and say that it's in terms of that. I'm going to use the same kind of reasoning to determine what z equals. Okay. Now we have all of the relevant information to describe that same point. 
this same point up here, that same point that I just circled, I just described it. I, I can describe it now in these terms. I can, I can say that sh theta was shared, and now I'm going to circle this, and I'm going to say that I just, I just found the cylindrical coordinates. coordinates for A. A is my point. A is this point up here. So, now I'm going to describe um, how we're going to convert the cylindrical coordinates for A that we found that are in terms of rho and phi, and how we can translate those into something even further, Cartesian coordinates, which are just x, y, and z's. Well, if we remember, if we have something that looks like this, if we have x, y, and r, if we have some kind of relationship with that, we can say that x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and I'm going to say that z is going to equal z. I'm saying that um, the cylindrical coordinates, we have some r, you wrap it around theta, and you put it up z, so r theta z's, that's cylindrical coordinates right there. And I'm going to say that this is how you find the x, y, and z. Well, now um, just substitute what we found over here for r and z and put it in, take those and put them in for these r's and uh, this z down here. Once we do that, we get the following. We get rho sine phi cosine theta, rho sine phi, uh, sine theta, and we leave z, uh, well z actually is going to equal rho cosine phi. So I'm using the same uh, equations and just substituting them in to find out what the spherical coordinates um, kind of look like once you put them into cylindrical, and then what they look like once they get all the way down to Cartesian. So that's kind of the intuition behind spherical coordinates. In the next video, I'm going to provide some examples to solidify uh, kind of the abstractness of this coordinate system compared to the other ones.